I have a little time today between projects and what I'd like to do is organize the sockets a little bit differently. So this big toolbox is great. It's the Icon from Harbor Freight. Basically, these are great for keeping everything together, but the problem is, is I rarely pick up a whole strip like this. They basically just stay in the toolbox and it really takes two hands for the most part to get these sockets off. And the other thing is my eyesight's not as good as it used to be. So oftentimes you can't read the number, like there's a 27, but this one depends how you put it back. You can't see what size that one is because it's in between the two sockets. So this, like for instance, you gotta flip it, 32. You know, they're all in order, but it just makes it hard to just reach in here, grab a socket one-handed and go. So I'm gonna use my new laser engraver cutter for making a socket organizer. One that'll be perfectly matched to the sockets I currently have and also fit this toolbox perfectly. So check it out. So I'm just going through and documenting the outer diameter of each of these because every one is slightly different. Infamous 10 is 540. Six oh five, and so on. I've got the settings now down, and it's cutting right now. Actually, it's engraving right now. So you can see the machine scanning along. Sometimes when you draw on the computer, these shapes look small, but this is very, very big. I can see this from across the garage. So this is, uh, I think it's good. The spacing is uh, 0.3 between every hole. Could be a little bit more condensed, but this is the first time. So see how it works out. And then I have yet to glue these together. So th there's, you know, four different layers on this. So we'll glue it together once we verify everything's good. There's no way that when you slam this around that these are gonna fall out. So I like the height on this. The deeper sockets are gonna be a little bit more of a challenge, but uh, we'll get there soon. It's engraving right through the paint, so it gives great contrast with this material. And as this gets used, just grease and dirt's gonna make those even darker. We're about done with this row. Now it's starting on the second row of sockets. So these three lights are pretty helpful. Um, it gives you status of the laser. Right now the air is off because it just kind of timed out, but there's no fire, which is good, but the lens is dirty. This is what I'm getting probably every four to five cuts, I'm getting the dirty lens. So I'll show you what I do to clean it. I have taken the whole thing apart before, but really it's just the lens that needs to be cleaned. So we'll do that real quick. Just make sure you switch it off. Undo these thumb screws here. And then this guy just unscrews. It's got an O-ring in there, so you gotta use some strong fingers. And I typically will just use this um, special lens cloth. And I'll just wipe out the inside because there is a little bit of residue in there. And then I get a nice clean section, you know, wipe the lens. Each time you clean the lens, you do have to reset the laser depth. And that's pretty easy with this little gauge right here. So I like to move it kind of to the center, put that underneath there. It just drops down on top, kind of support it while you're tightening these screws, little thumb screws, and that's it. Switch it back on. It does require a reset to get the lens light to turn off. So we'll just hold that down for a few seconds. And then let go, and it's green. 
It's a good idea to hit home after you re, re uh, powered the laser on. And now it's ready. There we go, all three green lights. The other thing I'm doing differently this time is I'm running a USB cable to my laptop so I don't have to run back and forth with this SD card. This is an SD card. You can just pop that in the machine here too. But I find it quicker just to go right from Lightburn, which is an application for lasers, to go right to the machine. It starts immediately and has all the same controls here on Lightburn as it does here on the front of the machine. Now we're back to cutting. This is 460 millimeters per minute, and it's 100% power. And it cuts through in one pass. And then this smoke, I'm getting out of the garage when this is running, I have the doors open, but MDF has got a lot of glue in it, so it's probably toxic, so I just leave. Okay, I made this one thicker because it has deep sockets. So this is one, two, three, six layers deep. And I made it so the deep sockets go all the way through. But I think when this is all glued together, these are not gonna wobble out of there. So we'll test it by slamming the drawer, you know, boom. But I don't think those are coming out. And even the smaller ones, this is the 10. 11. 12, 13, 16. So the only one that doesn't fit is the 14. Yeah, there's no way those, even if you slam it really hard. Okay, the 14 is off, so I'm just gonna go the old fashioned way with the uh, Christmas tree bit. It's easier to fix it now before I glue it. So go through a few more layers here. Make sure we get the right one. We don't need to go overboard on the glue. This, you know, isn't gonna be uh, heavily stressed or anything. So check this out. I was only able to get two of the trays done. This is for the 3 8 drive. I still have um, more to go on quarter inch drive and half inch drive, but this works out great. So the toolbox has this little mat in it and that kind of keeps things from sliding around. So I can, you know, slam the drawer, pull it open real hard and these will not move on the base. They just stay there and the uh, sockets don't fall out and they're just easy to grab, you know, like you can just easily see what size it is and get it. I'm super excited about this. I don't know why this is so fun for me, but I got the six points, the 12 points. I also tried to line up the sizes as best I could, but you know, this is the way the sets are. Sometimes you're like, you're missing a 16. Um, I don't need to buy a 16. I have a 16 right here if I need it. It's just a 12 point. Some of these sizes are rarely used anyways. The big ones are the 10, the 13, the 17, the 19. So that's kind of what I like to grab. This just makes a big difference to me. Greasy fingers, no problem. Um, this will never wipe off. This is engraved into it. It's just gonna get darker with time and then the painted surface is pretty easy to clean. This is the swivel right here, sticks in there. So yeah, I really like it. It's gonna be built all the way out. I still need to do this side of course, but um, I think ultimately it's gonna save a little bit of space because you don't have all this handle stuff and it just makes life so much easier getting things in and out. And I can see what sizes they are. Now, if you do need to pick up a tray, I mean, you can pick it up and walk with it if you want, but you just can't tip it upside down. But the stuff, you know, you can pick it up and, and take it somewhere if you need to. But these trays will never leave here. What I end up doing is this is my main toolbox. And then I also have this one. This cart rolls around and this has some of the same things, but these are extras and these are the most common sizes. Like I just talked about the 10, the 13, the 14, the 15, the 17, 
All these things are the ones I typically will use. So I'll typically grab from here if it's close to the car. Wrenches, whatever, screwdrivers are kind of up in the, in the top there. But it's always nice to have a complete set there in the toolbox ready to go. The cut time is pretty significant to make all those layers. So to do the, the top one with the engraving, it's about, I would say, 10 minutes or so. The cutting routine depends how many holes there are, but it's anywhere between four and six minutes on getting things cut out. So, but I do like the laser. It's plenty strong enough to cut through this material. Um, on second thought, I probably should have chose something that was a little bit less toxic to laser cut. But next time around, I might choose like either an, uh, um, just a, a, a solid wood, maybe some kind of thin veneer, eighth inch kind of just hard wood. That might be a better choice. But the Creality Falcon 2 is doing great. Highly recommend it. If you guys have any other uh, project ideas, let me know. Uh, also, what would you use this for? Because I might want to do it too.